Welcome to Tales of Honor Podcast, a podcast dedicated to telling the true stories of the Congressional Medal of Honor. Hello, hello everybody, and welcome to Tales of Honor Podcast. I'm your host, Christoph Ambrose, and tonight's episode, I am actually coming to you live from Troy, Pennsylvania. I uh, went on a little road trip this weekend, took my daughter up to see my parents, and uh, usually I try to get all my recordings done ahead of time, so when I do go out on trips, I don't have to worry about missing an episode or doing exactly what I'm doing now, which is recording an episode mobily, but... Here I am, and uh, we're going to knock this out. I'm recording nothing special, just recording on my iPhone, which, unlike everybody else this week, it is still an iPhone 7. And uh, tonight's episode is going to take us back to Vietnam, episode 43, and it's being brought to you by Sunrise Linens. So th- these are my good friends, and uh, they're a vintage vibe clothing company right, right, over the, right over the bridge in Bethlehem, Pennsylvania, and they offer a quality handmade clothing and like like everything great in this world, it's made right here in the U.S. of A. Visit their store at etsy.com slash shop slash sunrise linens. And when you're over there and you get done putting everything in and uh, getting ready to check out, be sure to enter the promo code TOH25 for 25% off your order. And be sure to follow them on Facebook and Instagram for new items and clothing lines. Like They just, uh, they just put up their winter collections. They're going to be coming out here shortly. So keep yeah, guess tune into them to see what's coming out. Sunrise Linens for nostalgia and wandering. And now a tale of honor. Humbert R. Versace was born in Honolulu, Hawaii, on the second of July, nineteen thirty-seven, and was the oldest of five children. His mother, Marie Rios, was an author, and one of her books was *The Fifteenth Pelican*. This book was the basis of the popular TV show, The Flying Nun, which starred Sally Field. Rocky, Humbert's nickname based on his middle name, grew up in Alexandria, Virginia, and attended Gonzaga College High School in Washington, D.C. For his junior year of high school, Rocky attended Frankfurt American High School in Germany, and he graduated from Norfolk Catholic High School. After high school, Rocky joined the U.S. Army, and just like his father, he attended the U.S. Military Academy at West Point. In 1959, he graduated and was commissioned as a second lieutenant of armor. Rocky went on to attend Ranger School and was a member of Class 4-60 and completed the course on the 18th of December, 1959. He then went on to and completed Airborne School. He then served in the 3rd Battalion, 40th Armor, 1st Cavalry Division in the Republic of Korea. Rocky was a platoon leader from March of 1960 to April of 1961 with M48 Patton tanks. Now a captain, Rocky was then assigned to the 3rd U.S. Infantry, the Old Guard, and served as a tank platoon leader for headquarters and headquarters company before volunteering for duty in Vietnam. Before his first tour, Rocky attended an intelligence course at Fort Holabird in Maryland and then a language course at the Presidio of Monterey in California. Rocky's tour in Vietnam began on the 12th of May, 1962, and he was an intelligence advisor. One year later, he volunteered for a six-month extension and had plans to join the Catholic priesthood at the end of his service and return to Vietnam as a missionary. However, Less than two weeks before the end of his tour, on the 29th of October, 1963, Rocky was accompanying several companies of South Vietnamese civilian irregular defense troops when they were ambushed by a Viet Cong main force. It was during this action, and the almost two years that followed, that Rocky would earn the Medal of Honor. The citation reads, For conspicuous gallantry and intrepidity at the risk of his life, above and beyond the call of duty, while a prisoner of war during the period of October 29, 1963 to September 26, 1965, in the Republic of Vietnam, while accompanying a civilian irregular defense group patrol engaged in combat operations in Thoi Binh District and Zuyin Province, Republic of Vietnam, on October 29, 1963, 
Captain Versace and the CIDG assault force were caught in an ambush from intense mortar, automatic weapons, and small arms fire from elements of a reinforced enemy main force battalion. As the battle raged, Captain Versace fought valiantly and encouraged his CIDG patrol to return fire against overwhelming enemy forces. He provided covering fire from an exposed position to enable friendly forces to withdraw from the killing zone when it was apparent that their position would be overrun, and was severely wounded in the knee and back from automatic weapons fire and shrapnel. He stubbornly resisted capture with the last full measure of his strength and ammunition. Taken prisoner by the Viet Cong, he demonstrated exceptional leadership and resolute adherence to the tenets of the Code of Conduct from the time he entered into a prisoner of war status. Captain Versailles assumed command of his fellow American prisoners, and despite being kept locked in irons in an isolation box, raised their morale by singing messages to popular songs of the day and leaving inspiring messages at the latrine. Within three weeks of captivity, and despite the severity of his untreated wounds, he attempted the first of four escaped attempts by dragging himself on his hands and knees out of the camp through dense swamp and forbidding vegetation to freedom. Crawling at a very slow pace due to his weakened condition, the guards quickly discovered him outside the camp and recaptured him. Captain Versailles scorned the enemy's exhaustive interrogation and indoctrination efforts and inspired his fellow prisoners to resist to the best of their ability. When he used his Vietnamese language skills to protest improper treatment of the American prisoners by the guards, he was put into leg irons and gagged to keep his protestations out of earshot of the other American prisoners in the camp. The last time that any of his fellow prisoners heard from him, Captain Versace was singing God Bless America at the top of his voice from his isolation box. Unable to break his indomitable will, his faith in God, and his trust in the United States of America and his fellow prisoners, Captain Versace was executed by the Viet Cong on September 26, 1965. Captain Versace's extraordinary heroism, self-sacrifice, and personal bravery involving conspicuous risk of life above and beyond the call of duty were in keeping with the highest traditions of the United States Army and reflect great credit to himself and the U.S. Armed Forces. Once his parents had learned of the fate of their son, they traveled to Paris in hopes to see the North Vietnamese delegation as they arrived for peace talks, but were unsuccessful. In 1969, nominations for the Medal of Honor were initiated, but instead was posthumously awarded the Silver Star for his actions. The nominations began again in 1999, and because of the 2002 Defense Authorization Act had new languages added by Congress, the nomination was authorized and the Medal of Honor was then awarded to Rocky's surviving siblings on the 8th of July, 2002, by President Bush in a ceremony at the White House. This was the first time an Army prisoner of war had been awarded the Medal of Honor for actions in captivity. In 2009, his Silver Star was revoked due to it being upgraded to the Medal of Honor. Humbert R. Versace's name is engraved on the Vietnam Veterans Memorial Wall, panel 01E, row 033, and his headstone stands above an empty grave at Arlington National Cemetery in section MG, site 108. And that was a tale of honor. Thank you so much for listening to Tales of Honor podcast, and uh, I know you like this podcast because even though I'm recording on an iPhone instead of my nice little studio mic, uh, you're still here, you're still listening, and you're still going to tune in in the future, which is which is good. I'm glad, and I thank you so much for the support. And if you like this podcast, go ahead, leave a nice review. And uh, if you're the guy or gal who decided to leave me a three-star rating and not write a review as to why you left me a three-star rating, well, let's just put it this way. Um, I kind of wish you never did, and uh, don't do it again. <laughs> you can see more information on Facebook and Instagram and at talesofhonorpodcast.com. If you have any questions or comments, you can send them to talesofhonorpodcast at gmail.com. And until next time, I'm Christoph Ambrose. Thanks for listening.